so here it is finished just finished the map a uh, few reflections while i can think about this work it probably took about a week to do over some weekends and uh, some evenings um it's not perfectly finished but watercolor and the work needs work but there are some nice bits about it the ice wastes turned out really well well this is um simply dropping salt onto the wet watercolor that works really well and that also works to give us some texture to the um, sort of old paper and I think the creature in the depths there works reasonably well it's not perfectly painted but it's reasonable um, I do quite like my drawings on the border I think they work well both in terms of the drawings and how it fit in with the old map and the detailing's nice and it's worth doing a border uh, the ships are obviously borrowed from various older maps I think the jungle turned out okay as well with the ruins peeking through it. What would I do differently? Not much. I think that um, it's just a case of practicing your watercolour work. And it's a huge project to do, a huge undertaking. You have to keep sort of keep going. To, to get all the detail in. Uh, the lettering isn't perfect and I will have it re-lettered digitally for the final version. I think also in some areas where it's darker than I intended, a bit of tweaking digitally just to pull it all together. But overall, I'm quite happy with it. So that's a little tour. story starts, as you know if you've read book one, uh, around North Beach Cove near Fallon, in the Duchy of Fallon, near the marshes. Heavily forested area, northern reaches, where our main character, Milas Clay, is Warden of the North. Huge stakes in the water to defend the city from attack from the creatures of the tide. And the desert kingdoms of Norshkin and the cattle hike. And some sneak peeks for future stories. There's the Barrens, also known as the Banshee Lands, the drained marshes because they've turned the whole of Norshkin into a desert to try and keep the creatures of the tide at bay. Karakain, the jungle area, and down to the plantations and the cane fields. And you might recall people talking about drinking cane in the first book, the Cassian Islands, and Duchy of Bale. And then the spine and Temple One, which is right in the heart of the Maelstrom. I wanted to 
include a sort of bestiary of creatures uh, in the border of the map. So the map is half map, half bestiary. So we've got the Kappa, and my version of the Kappa is based on the Japanese version, but uh, less turtly, and uh, uh, and more like the head filled with water is a gill. And then across to the cane wraith. I'll say no more at this stage. And the banshee. And the lost. So there's so much more to come from this story. So many more monsters. But really fun to give you some teasers in the map for where the story is going. The final stage then was to take the map into the computer and digitally tweak and rebalance some things. And then I arranged for the letter of the tide, and Rob Jones to kindly letter over my hand-drawn lettering, just to tidy up the lettering on the map for the final version. So I'm really pleased to have done the map and shared that with you. And uh, the map will feature as a stretch goal in the new campaign for the Tide 3. And you'll also be able to get Tide Volumes 1 and 2 and catch up on the story if you've not read it before. Um, and I'll be looking at adding uh, the Tide map as a stretch goal. Um, so please uh, do give this a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Um, because the more people that find this and find the Tide campaign, the more likely we are to hit the stretch goals. Um, and if you're uh, finding this video after the campaign has finished, uh, then please uh, have a look at the links in the description um, uh, about where to get the Tide from, uh, be it at the Kickstarter um, or joining my mailing list uh, or having a look at my website. Uh, so thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed looking at the Tide and the map of the world. Thanks.